Hello, hello. Hello, hello. What's up, y'all? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Hello, folks. Let me know how my audio is sounding. It looks like it might be too loud. Let me know if my music is too loud. I had to redo my OBS stuff on my Mac, so I don't really know how everything looks. Kind of just rolling with it at the moment are you going to test out the new xs10 i hope so i don't know <laughs> i'll have to see if i can get my hands on one soon but that thing looks pretty beasty um especially as like a uh like a vlogging camera or just like youtube vlog vlogging type stuff in general i think it'd be hype especially because it has ibis and it's tiny it's basically like everything I wanted from the X-T30, but not a uh, X-T30, I guess. <laughs> you got a flip screen. I mean, like, it's literally going to be like the perfect. I'm wondering if like YouTubers will jump on it at all. Audio is good. Really hear. Don't really hear the music. Oh, wow. Interesting. It's always getting the audio is the worst. We're getting some. It's pixelated. Wow, my thing is showing me that it's only going up to 360 as far as quality, but I'm definitely streaming higher than that. Unless I unless I messed up something. Do 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 do, do. output is the full thing. Yeah, it should be able to stream up the 1440p basically yeah new xc3 update yeah i was actually that's probably the hypest thing from the whole uh the summit was the firmware update of the xc3 dang my exposure it's like it was dark this whole time and then the moment i start streaming the sun is like there we go that's a little better. We can deal with that. Hey, hey, hello. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. So basically what I'm going to do is if you all aren't familiar with narrative, basically they make an app for making blog posts on your website, which making blog posts of your weddings and engagement sessions and so on and so forth is actually super important and it can help you get more business in the long run and stuff like that. But they also have a beta of a program they call Selects, which is basically a competitor to Photo Mechanic. Now, the cool thing about Select is that it actually also has a setting where you can like, it has AI in it that will tell you if people's eyes are closed or if they're in focus or not. So I'm going to call a couple of weddings that I need to call anyway, using this beta of Narrative Select. Now, I have never used, I literally just downloaded it. This is my first time using it at all. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that it is a beta, so if I'm over here like, I don't know what's happening, it's a beta still, but yeah, let's jump in and check it out. What's up, John? I'm born and raised Charlotte. Still live here and wanted to know if you would do a live class meetup, either Charlotte or Raleigh. I am thinking, so actually, I was going to do a live workshop in New York, and I think it was like April or something, but obviously 
everything happened. So I still am planning on doing a live in person and doing something in Charlotte or Raleigh or like Greensboro or somewhere in the middle like that is much more likely. So keep an eye out for that too. Anyone who may want to travel to North Carolina or something, um, I definitely am planning on doing some live workshops. I just have to work it out. And then obviously we have to figure out what's happening with the sickness and everything like that. Um, yeah, so let's check this thing out. Let's see what this thing is about. Is my chat not working again? This thing hates me. All right, so here's narrative. It says create a project. Um, oh, there goes the chat. Wow, look at it. Wow, it's just. <laughs> hey, can you send example script emails that you send to your clients? I could, I actually don't really have scripted emails. I usually write out a lot of mine. I need to start making more like scripts, but I do have like a workflow and stuff like that. That stuff will probably be kept on Patreon mainly. Um, see, okay. So me personally, I'm already running into something personal that would be an issue for me is that I don't even know what I'm gonna call first. So the fact that I have to put the project name first is kind of annoying actually. Um, so what am I calling? I need to call uh, Natalia and Brandon. <laughs> These images. Add some images to start. So ingest, you can come straight from an SD card or you can link a source, which is what I wanna do. So we're gonna link a source. We're gonna to go to my photos drive 2020. So these are all my raws, weddings, Natalia and Brandon, open. We're importing your images, how nice. We got up and coming photographers, thank you much. We got Germany in the house, hello, welcome. So right now it is importing my images. I wish there was like a bar or something for me to know. Also too, I wonder, cause people be having issues with rafts. Hey, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Face data loading. We're currently working on getting this faster, so please bear with us. When you see face loader in the top right corner of your image, it means we are still cropping faces. And scanning for blink and focus data. Fortunately, until this process is finished, you won't be able to use some of our key features. Okay, that's fine. Got it. Oh, there was a bar? I didn't even see it. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> All right. We're in here. So we got our photos on the left. What is this? Zoom straight to face. Pressing space. Okay, so you can zoom in on your photos. Zoom level, zoom peaking. Okay, so this is normal, I see. Ooh, I'd love to call like this actually. Or maybe like, cause I don't need the whole photo. Or you can, was that zoom to fit? Yeah. John, not speaking English, Viltrox lens, good or bad. I've never used any. Um, I actually just got an email someone was offering me to test out a Viltrox, so I might do it. Uh, so we got a grid mode. Cool. Can you call in grid mode? You can. Hmm. How nice. But I think this will work. Um, so it looks like I can't use like scrolling or anything to go through the photos, which is fine. Um, I do prefer scrolling because I feel like it's faster. 
nice and it shows how many I've done so you see the one five star because I just five star this first photo um, yeah let's let's see how fast this thing can go so this was a backyard wedding I did recently For the most part, I was using the um, the 56. So like this is with the 56, but I did end up switching to the 50 when I started doing their portraits because the 50 is so good. <laughs> How come you're using the Mac side of your PC? I prefer Hackintosh over Windows anytime, cheers. Um, the main reason I'm using is because Narrative Select is only Mac OS at the moment. Um, so I had to reset up my whole OBS on the Mac side, which it's actually holding up pretty well. I remember back in the day, OBS on Mac was like, yeah, it was the worst. Um, so yeah, y'all can see it here. You see this little line and a dot. So that's the AI letting me know that she's in focus and that her eyes are open. And I think if I hit this, yeah. This is the close up of her face so I can like see that it is fully in focus. Oh, will that stay open the whole time? Yeah, so now the bar is yellow because the eyes are partially open. And I think they were telling me you can change your preferences, auto advance to the next image after adding. Hmm. Toast, so to toast? Keyboard shortcuts, assessments. So yeah, you can change it. And I'll probably change it like this. So you can do green means everything's good. Red means it's bad. Indicators, eyes and focus, eyes only focus. Show assessments on zoom faces. Film strip, oh, you can change it, nice. Canvas color. Wow. Cool. So I'm gonna, can I close this? There it goes, cool. So this was, this was a pretty dark situation. I had like barely any light. I'm shooting with an X-T3 here and I think my ISO was pretty high at this point. My shutter was low too, so you're gonna see a lot of like blurry photos here and there. Yo, this face indicator is so good. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I do like it the other way, actually. Because then if everything's good, just nothing shows up. Thank you for that sub. I may have to give this a try. Focus mode using here. Uh, focus mode is single point. Again, and I talked about that in my newest video. I don't use continuous at all, ever. Never, ever use it. I'm usually single point focusing and I'm choosing the point with the little nub on my camera. What software is this? It's called Narrative Select. Um, let me see if I can find a link to it, actually. It's new, it's in beta still, so it's not even fully ready. Y'all can check it out here. What is happening with my chat box? Okay.
Okay. There we go. So yeah, basically, and we'll see this once I get to the family portraits, but the real draw to this is that it helps you see if people's faces are in focus and if their eyes are open, which saves so much time when it comes to family portraits. Are you in Hack or Mac? This is a Hackintosh. Tis a Hackintosh. So not a legit Mac. <laughs> Nice, so so far I've culled 42 images, which is really cool that it can like tell you that. Oh, can I rotate photos? I can't, unless there's something I'm missing. Oh, rotate, I see, it's a key command, okay. Okay, cool. They have a queue for those interested. Yeah, you have to sign up with your email and wait for it basically. Love the presets. Just what I needed to make photos pop more. Thank you so much. Glad you're enjoying the preset. Again, it is, it is my personal preset. It is what I use. So yeah, see red here because his eyes are closed, but again, that's fine in this shot. Thank you for that sub. We're about there, y'all. We're about at that 50K subs. I can't even believe I'm so close. It's kind of crazy, really. So again, I tend to overcull and I'm fine with that. I'd rather overcull and then while I'm editing, I can just make the decision to get rid of stuff. Oh, just to put it in perspective too, let me, as far as like dynamic range of Fuji, uh, where are you? Cause everyone's like, oh no, it's crop sensor. How are you, what do you do with low life? or low, low life, <laughs> low light. Um, where are my photos? Like here's an edit from that same scene. And you see how dark it was, so. Do I ever use flash indoors? Sometimes, um, I decided not to on this wedding because I didn't want to. Like if I don't have to, I really won't. But like, yeah, I most of the time I'd rather not. This one was half and half. I definitely could have used flash in this case. Yeah, so see, focus is off here, but I'll probably black and white it and it looks fine. We got Brazil in the house. Are you star rating your images here? Or just a thumbs up and down? I do star ratings, um, but I tend to keep it just five star. 
So I'm very, very straightforward with it. I know I'm late. I just want to know. Oh, your work is amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Raleigh Wood. Yo, this thing is good. And see, I can I didn't have it turned on, but let's turn this on. Look at that. It like catches each face. It knows exactly. Nebraska in the house. We got Mozambique. I have a Mavic Mini and don't have much money. Is there anything I can do in the real world to make money with it? Oh yeah, the Mavic Mini is awesome. I'm sure you could do like either little videos for people or like, um, not architecture, but you know, real estate type stuff. I'm sure you could break into that with the Mavic Mini. You're not gonna have like the best, best quality in the world, but you can definitely make it work. Most of the time people just want a little something anyway, and you can definitely provide that. Bought your presets yesterday. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying it. We got India in the house. Here, let's keep calling with this thing open so we can see how it grabs the faces. Wow, it even got the officiant in the background. Crazy. We got South Africa and we got the whole got the whole world. <laughs> Look at this thing grabbing all the faces, y'all. This program is crazy. Wow. It's for real doing this, like. Are y'all are y'all experiencing this with me? This is crazy. <laughs> this is narrative select. It's in beta right now. Out of the topic, can you tell but can you tell something about the XS10? I honestly don't know much about it. Um I've have not used one physically or seen it yet. Um But I think it's hype. And honestly, as far as like YouTube is concerned and vlogging, I think it's, it is the, the camera to have for vlogging and stuff. If you're going to go Fujifilm. And I hope people do go Fujifilm because that color, the colors are like where it's at. Everybody out of focus. Y'all see how drastically that lighting changed because the sun started going down? The white balance is going to be fun. It's an entry level Fuji for 1K that sounds great to me. I mean, yeah. So you're running from side to side here. Yep, I am. Um, I did not have a second photographer at this wedding. Um, especially just because it was like a small... So like, yeah, it's a small wedding and it's just me. And moving from side to side, honestly, is not that hard. You just have to kind of know the flow of a wedding day and kind of just take your time. This was all done on the 56, so I'm like moving closer with my feet and everything, getting in there for a couple of zoom shots.
Can you explain the bar and the dot? Yeah, so, so the bar is telling me if their eyes are open or closed and the dot is telling me if it's in focus or not. Um, so you can see here while I'm hovering over it, red is saying his eyes aren't totally open. They're saying 13, so like, oh, like very close to being closed. And the dot is how in focus he is. If the dot is gray, that's good. And if it's yellow, it's kind of bad and red is all the way bad. And then on the right side here, it'll show you all the faces that it sees. So again, this feature with the face stuff is mainly helpful for like family photos and group shots, which we'll see that coming up in just a moment here. Because generally after my ceremony, I go immediately into family photos. So for first kiss, I usually throw my camera into high shutter speed. So on Fuji's, that's the, uh, what's it, H, the CH. So I'll turn on the CH and then just let that thing run. So I pretty much, I can turn this into a GIF if I want to as well. Cause again, you wanna make sure you have more shots. Yeah, so see here, the focus grabbed her in the back. This is kind of, I'll keep this. I got the BenQ monitor, like you suggested, absolutely love it, awesome, nice. Yeah, they're definitely my hands down favorite. Actually, they're starting to become my favorite brand too. I, um, I've made another Hackintosh, that's the video I made recently. So that little Hackintosh, my wife is actually gonna use it mainly. Um, so I got her a little like small, like 20 something inch 1080p BenQ monitor and I was highly impressed by the monitor. So BenQ is kind of my go-to right now. Ah, I wish there wasn't so many people in the background. I ended up, I photoshopped one of these shots and got his dad out of the background because their expressions were just so good. This was signing of their... Yeah, so here we go. This is where Narrative Select really shines. What software? This is called Narrative Select. Let me post it for y'all. I think I, is it in my... Yeah. Check it out there. It's still in beta, but definitely, definitely check it out. I actually think I have a link. Yeah, I got a link specifically for y'all. Hold on. Check it out there, it's cool stuff. Cool stuff, but yeah, so it's showing me that everyone's in focus here. We got everyone's faces, everyone's eyes are open. Are you using face autofocus or spot to capture these, especially the bubble shots? Uh, I think I may have turned on face autofocus for the bubble shots. But for the most part, and again, I've said it, I don't use continuous, because especially for something like bubbles, like, oh wow, you can go through the different phases. 
Yo, this thing is pretty cool. Um, if you do single point, I can just find the face and grab it and keep it there. If I have continuous, it's going to keep getting caught up on the bubbles and stuff. So a lot of times I just don't use continuous autofocus. Oh, this is so good. It's so good. It is so good. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Which Mac do you use? So the Mac I'm using is a Hackintosh, but the closest thing to it is probably like an iMac Pro. Um, I'm rocking an i9-9900K. Um, and then I have a Radeon 7 for my uh, graphics card. This is hype, y'all. This might be the new look. Yeah, this might be the new look. The photo mechanic might have to go away. Look, we even got the kids in there so we can see if they're looking at the camera. 6,600 on the wait list, wow. You can't open the last link? Oh, it worked for me. How much RAM? Uh, 128 gigs. 128 gigs. I have all the RAM. Bro, this is, I can't, this is so good. Hi, John, I want to buy your natural fills preset pack, but I want to see how high contrast preset looks on your photos. Uh, I can do that at some point when I do another one of my editing all the photos. Type of photos. Did I already call one of these photos? Yeah, that was this group. Okay. Wow, y'all, this thing is in there. This is so good. So, so good. I took show, so many shots just trying to make sure we got the kids in there. So it does seem like it, it's not really slowing down that much, but it definitely is like, it feels a little slower than photo mechanic. Especially when you're dealing with those group photos, but on the same end, it's like showing you close up of everyone's face, so. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that, you know? <laughs> so this, at this point, I switched over to the 50 F1. This is the 23 F2. For these wide shots. Thank you for that sub. What program are you using? I just came in. This is called Narrative Select. It is in beta. It is awesome. Definitely check it out. So it's for culling. It's Mac only currently, but it shows you everyone's faces with AI and it'll detect for you if 
their faces were in focus and if their eyes are open or not. So see here, in a group shot, it's pulling everyone's face. Everything is gray, so that means their eyes are open and everything is in focus or basically in focus. Dude, you have to tell me how to get that 128 gig Hackintosh. <laughs> is this only for Adobe? No, this is by a company called Narrative. So this is totally outside of Adobe, but you can use it in conjunction with Lightroom and stuff. So see, my focus was off here. This is all with the 50 F1. Thank you for the sub. Good morning, hello. So here is a walking shot coming up with the 50 F1. So you can get an idea of how it tracks. It, it does pretty good. This is back on the 23, it looks like. 50 F1 again. Good old 50F1. Sixteen 2.8. Have you ever tried the Viltrox 56 1.4? I haven't, but again, I do have, someone just emailed me and they want me to try it out. Um, so I, may, I'm, I might have to take them up on that. only for Mac yeah <laughs> I actually so the problem I'm running into right now is that y'all know I do most of my photo editing on Windows but this is Mac only luckily I have both systems so this stuff is being saved to the metadata of the file so I'm assuming I should be able to um, log back into Windows and then pull the metadata from the files Do you edit chronologically? Uh, editing, no. Culling, yes. Um, it's much easier when I'm kind of like following the day because I, I remember the day and how it went and you know what was going on and it just makes more sense that way. It helps me call faster too because then I know like what's coming up and how the pictures were and so on and so forth. Yeah, this, this program is good. So this was a Brennheiser, this was the safe shot. And then here are all the other shots that go along with it. Have you used JPEG Mini? If yes, how is it? Yes. JPEG Mini is a normal part of my workflow. Um, I love it, hands down. Um, if you don't use it, get on it now. Like that's, there's no question about it. Um, definitely get it, it's a great program. 
Shout out to Bull City. Here's some off-camera flash for you all, since no one ever sees me do it. And so again, with this scene, I wanted to keep the flash looking natural, so it's not like overly like flash, but I had to use off-camera flash. So I have, um, her dad came with us, or no, it was his dad. Um, he's standing left of the scene, holding up one of my flashes. And then I also have a flash on my camera triggering his flash as well as mine. Do you sync the times on your cameras? If so, how? Yeah, I just, in the settings of your camera, I just go through and set the, the time of each one. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, from Lightroom, you can just import the metadata. Yeah, exactly. And since it's writing to the metadata, regardless of if I'm on Windows or, P or Mac, it should find it, so. John, you ever considered doing a clinic of sorts? Kind of like a workshop or something? Yes, I have. Um, hopefully something coming up soon, but obviously the pandemic kind of messed me up. I was gonna do one in April in New York, but yeah. <laughs> Are you still using pick time to share your photos with clients? I started using it and I like it, but my trial is almost over. Not sure if I want, yeah. Pick time is my main thing that I use for delivering my photos. Um, and hands down, it's my favorite. Like it really, it's really good. Honestly, I can't really suggest anything more. In my opinion, it's one of those must haves. And honestly, I'm about to make a video. Everyone gets mad at me because they think I'm just out here like slinging affiliate links, which I really am not. Um, there's just, there's some programs that are must haves in my eye to help you run your business and get the full experience of being a photographer, especially if you're doing something like weddings. Cause like you can't hope to charge something like $5,000 and you don't have like a good system that also looks attractive to your, your clients, you know? This was with the 50 F1. Cause you know, if your clients are like paying you $5,000, you want the presentation to be nice. Not just like, here's a Google link of all your photos or here's Dropbox. You know, that's just not, it's not a good look. Do you upload full dimension sizes after you're done with JPEG mini process? Yeah, so what I normally do with JPEG mini is, so I export the photos and then I take the photos and throw them in JPEG mini. Um, and then from there, I upload the JPEG mini photos, the ones that were shrunk in size. I upload those to pick time. This is why I can save hard drive space. I messed up y'all. My shutter was slow and I was rushing this Brandizer. So you see how like I got the motion blur in some of the shots. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use it. Yeah, it looks horrible. Oh, so see we got closed eyes. So we got our red. So here we go, that's better. So here is cake cut. Did my smile photo get messed up because it didn't focus? Oh no, we got one. Okay, I was about to be like, no. Y'all, I really, really like these like small backyard weddings, like really. They're nice, they're small, they're like just enough. I can still do my job to the best of its ability. I'm still giving people amazing photos. It's just like, it's a good time. Did 
So I shot this first one with the 50 F1 and obviously not everyone's in focus. And I stopped down some, but it also was dark. Um, then I took this one, which will be better with the 23, I think it was. There's their little goose friend they had at their house. And I think that's the end of the night. Yep, that's everything. So I called, I have 332 photos. I can go back to the grid mode now and I can also just select my five stars and I can see them all here. And now at this point, I would do the normal process that I do even in photo mechanic where it's like, I go in, I select all my photos, I choose read metadata from file, and I go in from there. This is hype, y'all. I like this a lot, actually. Your uploads to Facebook, is it 20, 48 long side or Instagram? No, I pretty much, I pretty much just, everything I export for social, I export it at 2,500 on the long side. Uh, 72 PPI and then I'll run it through JPEG mini um, just to make the size smaller and then pull it up like that so do you use the pick time plugin for Lightroom or just upload I usually upload manually um, I'm lazy like that <laughs> I just don't use the plugin now the question is is if I go to call something else will it keep because it looks like this is a tab so I'm assuming it's gonna tab a new one so new project. Um, again, for me, this is a little annoying because I'm not sure what I'm going to call yet. Unless I had just shot the wedding and I was like ready, but a lot of times I don't call that early. Um, so let me go back into my stuff again and figure out what I need to call. Uh, Alexandria and Ahmed. And then we want to link a source. Our source is here. Where's this bar at the bottom? Oh, I see it. That thing is so minimal. <laughs> I guess y'all can see it better because you have this like nice full screen. I don't, that thing is like so far on the bottom. I have like 32 inch screens. Do you shoot three by two or 16 by nine? Or what is it? Curious as to how you size your photos for the customer. Yeah, everything is three by two, just like the normal photo link. The only time I ever 16 by nine anything, a lot of the times is if it's a Brenizer shot or if I just think it looks cool, it's 16 by nine. But generally I don't 16 by nine anything. So here goes all of our stuff again. Cool. There it is, we're in here. We can open up our face panel again. Nice, yeah, and then the other one is still open as a tab. It looks like the grid mode is universal, so it'll stay, oh no, it's not. But it just, okay, it doesn't go back to where it was. Cool. Let's call down again. Open this face thing back up. Uh, get used to rotating, yeah. Yep, y'all, I'm liking it. I like it. So this couple, they ended up moving their like full wedding, but they still wanted to do a little ceremony on the day of. So they still had their actual wedding date. This is the 50 F1 with an extension tube on it to get that macro shot. As far as editing is concerned, do you ever crop anything out of the shot or do you try and keep that in mind while you're shooting? I generally try and keep that stuff in mind while I'm shooting. Um, that's kinda, I don't know if y'all checked out my new video, but the seven tips for your first wedding. 
but that's one of the tips is to like clean up your backgrounds. So I do try my best to keep that stuff in mind. Now, again, I do shoot mainly for the emotion. So if I do run into something where like the emotion was good, but then, you know, there's stuff in the background, that's just kind of what it is. But if I do have control and the time to go ahead and remove some stuff from the background, I do. Same as if I, um, you know, like this shot in itself, it was pretty clean. There was um, some bottles like dog cleaning stuff or something right in this area. And I did remove that stuff because again, it was just an eyesore in the shot. Hi John, here is a different question. Go ahead, put it in there. I wanna use the iPad for traveling so I can edit. How do I use presets on it? So the main way to use presets on your iPad is that you have to have Lightroom CC on your computer. So Lightroom CC is different from Lightroom Classic, but if you load your presets into Lightroom CC, they will automatically sync to your iPad. And then you're able to use those presets on your iPad. So I was shooting pretty low shutter here. That's why we're seeing a couple shots that are blurry. But for the most part, this stuff is fine and it's savable and it works. So it looks like at the moment it doesn't pull animal faces. <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw it in it. She had her dog with her. Bro, oh, that last one was better. Yeah. There we go, these all look good. There we go. Here's the venue. I think these were test shots, yeah. This is all with the 50 F1 again. That lens is, that lens is doing work. What is your ISO on these? I think I was up around 800. I don't like to go that high on my ISO. You should totally do a flat lay tutorial. Your flat lays are fire. Thank you so much. I do have, um, I made a video that I made a mistake on and didn't record my A-roll. Um, so that is on Patreon. So there is a video currently of something. I used off-camera flash at this wedding as well. So narrative select doesn't see the face of the dog. Yeah, it looks like it didn't see it at all. Speaking of Lightroom CC, do you still edit in CC or do you stick to classic? CC doesn't allow for anything above 300 quality exports. Yeah, as far as far as CC is concerned, the exports still aren't there yet. So when I'm working on my main computer, I'm on classic and I do all my exports on the main computer in classic. Now, when I'm traveling and I use my iPad, obviously I have to edit in CC because that's all there is. Um, but it's good enough for editing. The exports just struggle.
the timing on my cameras is so off. Yeah, this thing does really good pulling faces. Like, it's just quickly being like, okay, here's everybody's faces. What do you suggest for Lightroom? Like, which version of Lightroom? If you want, like, the full professional experience, definitely use Classic. Um, Classic is going to be your best, your best choice. But if you're just editing some photos and putting it on um, social media or something, then CC is just fine. How do you decide between shots that are extremely similar, especially when you have multiple of the same shot? When I used to shoot weddings, I'd only take one or two of the shots, not four plus. Basically for me, it's all just about emotion and feeling. Um, I do, again, tend to over cull. So what will end up happening is when I go back to edit, I'm gonna cull down when I have like too many of the same shots. So obviously, yeah, I could probably save myself some time if I just like, you know, didn't take as many shots and so on and so forth, but you know, I like to get the emotion in there. So you edit while you travel on CC. What then, is there a way to transfer these over to, yep, there is. Um, I have videos on that stuff, but basically, especially between an iPad and a computer, how it works is that if you're in classic on your main computer, you can have photos sync. When it syncs, it syncs to Lightroom CC. So then when you pull up your iPad, basically you're seeing all the photos synced over. You edit it on your iPad and then it syncs back to your main computer. And then when I get back, from traveling, I can just jump in and export all the photos. And that's usually my process. Yeah, I think the only thing I would personally like, or one thing that I like better about Photo Mechanic, is that I can scroll through the photos using like a scroll wheel. Whereas with this, it's it's just the button, which is fine, but it's just a lot of pressing. So here we go. Selects shining, shining feature, which is it being able to see everyone's faces so group shots family shots hands down the best because now i already know the shot is framed right for the most part um so now i can just look on the right side here and see that yes everyone's looking we even got the little baby looking Yeah, we got all the faces, we got smiles, looks good. Yeah, this is this is the best for family photos. Hands down the best. This is crazy. So good, y'all. This feature alone for family photos is like it's it's so good. 50 F1 again. 
Then I had two seconds to take some pictures of the room because they flipped the room. All of this is the 50 F1. Yeah, I was complaining about the size and the weight, but honestly, y'all, the more I use the 50, the more I fall in love with it, like, for real. So now we're on to couple portraits. So this day it was raining, right? So the the biggest thing you can ever do for yourself on rainy days, especially if it's in and out, is take photos where and when you can. So this couple, they wanted to go to downtown Apex because we were in Apex. And so we were about to go, but you know, we had this covering. So I was like, let me go ahead and take a handful of portraits of them here under this covering that still looks nice because again if it starts downpouring which i didn't know if it would or wouldn't i would have no photos at all if i was just like okay let's go downtown like we had planned um so you know i let them know like hey let's take a couple pictures right here real quick because again it's going to be very important if we end up not being able to take any more photos elsewhere. So definitely make sure you're doing that if you can. Like if if you have the chance to take photos in a safe spot, take some safe shots on rainy days. Cause you have no idea when, you know, when it's all gonna just start coming down and then you won't be able to take photos at all. And then you'll have to take photos indoors which is never what I want to do, ever. This is more 50 F1 portraits. And this was all with the 23 F2. Here comes this walking shot I posted the other day. I love these kind of shots, they're so good. And then I took it wider, just in case, which I need to go back and mess with the wider shot. When you're further away like that, do you stop down to make sure everything's nice and sharp? Not always, I probably should, but <laughs> a lot of times I'll still shoot at F2. Um, but yeah, you should definitely stop down a little bit. What was your F stop for the staircase when they were standing apart? I'm pretty sure I stopped down a little bit, but I may have shot it wide open. We got Bosnia and Madagascar in the house. Hello, welcome. I wonder if there's a way. So the ground was wet. So the only problem here is she's, she's holding her dress because again, they want to do like a ceremony and party later. So obviously for this shot, I wouldn't have had her holding her dress like that, but I think it's fine still. Here's some walking shots, but I don't think I particularly like them. Beautiful photos, gotta get back to work, but greetings from Mexico. Thank you for hanging out and watching. We got Switzerland. The color of that building, yeah, that blue is so good.
So for this, I was trying my best to not have any people or cars in the background. And using the trees is kind of like framing. And then that F1 obviously helps keep everything just like totally blown out as well. These were shot with a 16 2.8, which that's another good thing. Like, yes, it's 2.8, it doesn't let in as much light, but it's kind of nice because everything is already kind of stopped down. It's gonna be nice and sharp. So you don't have to worry about any of that basically. And then all my close-ups were with the good old 50 F1. Someone gave them a congratulations and that's where this shot came from. Now for this, I don't particularly like the hand placement, but outside of that, like, I just love the expressions on everyone's faces. So sometimes you kind of have to deal with it. We got California in the house, hello. Good morning? Yeah, good morning, right? <laughs> Is it better to lighten a dark photo or to darken a light photo? So it really depends. There's a lot of things. So the biggest thing first to think about is your clients and their skin tones. So obviously here we have mixed skin tones and generally when you have black or brown skin, you don't wanna underexpose too heavily. So in that case, brightening a darker photo, it does work and it's good because again, you wanna save your skies, but you wanna expose for the skin as well. If you have someone with darker skin and then someone with lighter skin and you underexpose too much, you lose a lot of detail in the person whose skin is darker. So that's my biggest tip to anyone shooting photos of someone with darker skin is don't underexpose too much. You actually want your exposure to be pretty much spot on, but generally it's easier to lighten a darker photo than it is to darken a lighter photo. But it all depends again on the scene and what's in the photo and just general everything really. It really comes down to the whole scene and what you're trying to expose for. Usually if you're exposing for the people then, you know, that's gonna be the most important part. So now we're at the end of the night. At this point, it's just reception, stuff like that. Pretty straightforward, um, especially because, again, this is like a small wedding, so there's not really, there's not really a huge reception. Like, there was some speeches and that was about it. I was shooting everything with the 50 F1, but because of the way they were sitting, they're kind of on the same focal plane, but they're not really totally in focus, so. I also was using off-camera flash here as well. I had an extra, so I had flashes on my camera and then one flash off-camera just to kind of fill the room up a little bit more. Is that a white balance thing with skin tones? Yes, skin tones is also white balance as well. So it's don't underexpose if you have super dark skin and also with white balance, it's, if stuff is too, and I've what I've noticed is even when you shoot raw, if you shoot and the Kelvin is off on the skin tones, it's hard to bring it back correctly. It still doesn't look right. So for instance, like if you're shooting brown skin and Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you're shooting brown skin and in camera white balance has everybody looking extra blue, you need to warm up your Kelvin so that their skin still at least looks brown so that when you go to um, actually edit your photos, 
the skin is already in a brown tone. Because if you don't do that, you're gonna run into issues. Like, like for real, you're gonna run into issues. I actually think that's what I was doing this day. I don't think I was shooting in uh, auto white balance. I was shooting in um, shade because it was like so rainy and cloudy. Everything was super blue. Hello, I bought your preset for natural fills and they are very good. You're a boss. Thank you so much. <laughs> Got me stuck between two lives. Capture one and <laughs> and you. <laughs> are they are are they announcing new stuff? Does Narrative Select have an iPad app? They do not. That would be hype though. You know what? I should tell them that they need to work on that. Cause yeah, if they had an iPad app, like really, cause iPads are gonna be the future. I'm telling you, this is gonna be the future. Yeah, all of this is straight out of camera. This is the um the JPEG previews that came out of the camera. So obviously this stuff is gonna get edited, but this is what it looked like straight out of camera with the Fuji colors. I use classic Chrome. No, just tethering. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for 50K subs that I can do a live photo shoot and tether. I'll probably use Capture One because it's definitely the best for tethering. Um, but tether and live stream and sh show me shooting and stuff like that. I'm probably not gonna do off camera flash, but we'll see. Um, for the most part, I like to use my natural light, so most of it will probably be just natural light stuff. But we'll be in a studio setting and I'll tether, so you'll be able to see that. So cute, we got a little cake cut here. So if you've already mentioned this, but how are you lighting these indoor settings? So for this one, and you can see it, you see me here reflecting in the, the, the window, I hate that. But um, so I have on camera flash and I do have one off camera. But the off-camera one is just kind of filling the room a little bit. You can kind of see the flash from the other one in the window as well. So generally, I will 800 ISO, somewhere in that range. Flash on my camera, point it straight up with the max sphere on it, which you can see the max sphere here lit up. Um, flash power is usually around 132 or 116. And then my other flash, which was off to the right of this scene somewhere, and it was pretty far. It's on a stand and it's fairly high. I had that one at 116 and a max sphere on it, pointed straight up again, just kind of throwing some light around. Um, the flashes that I use, they can trigger each other. So that's why I have on camera and also off camera flash going at the same time. It's kind of the, the best overall scenario. Gotta get the baby shots in. Oh, look at this, it's so sharp, look at that. So yeah, even on this one, so there's on-camera flash and then there's also a flash to the right helping light this as well. So this is kind of the end of the night, doing gifts and things like that. I missed some of these, yeah. Oh yeah, so there it is. You can see it now in this shot. Here's the off-camera flash with my flash on it on a stand with a mag sphere on top of it. I used your flat lay method with the details. It worked like a bomb. Client said the flat lay images look amazing. Awesome, that's so good. Nice, thank you. The photos came out good. I got mag sphere too. Awesome, awesome. Hey John, how are you doing? Can you recommend memory cards that are fast enough for the X-T2? Yeah, so with the X-T2 or three or whatever, um, generally what I've been using are these SanDisk Extreme Pro. I usually do 128 gigs. It's probably not gonna focus if it sees my face, is it? Maybe. 
No. <laughs> it won't do it. Ah! Um, their SanDisk. I use the 128 gig ones, and it's 170 megabytes per second. Um, they're fast. They're good. They're good. They're fast. They're good. They're fast. They're good. They're fast. The live streaming photographer community is growing fast on Twitch. We love to have you on our team if you're interested. So you know what? I actually started live streaming on Twitch because especially me being a gamer mainly, I was drawn toward Twitch first. I had a hard time streaming on Twitch. No one even knew me. It's hard because I feel like the, the art community on Twitch doesn't get as much love as it could or should. Um, but that's where I started. And I was following a couple of photographers there as well. Your work is dope. Shout out from Minnesota. Thank you so much. Yeah, y'all see the flash here reflecting in the window. So that's the off camera. So it's coming from the back here. Do you create mood boards for your shooting? I don't normally, um, but I should for styled shoots. Here's a gift they got from grandma. She made this by hand. How cute. And that stuff, you gotta get that. So like, if you see earlier um, in the shot, so I was here, right? They opened the gift and I couldn't really see it from this direction. So when they were looking at it and they were like, oh, did you made that? I immediately moved um, to make sure that I got this shot. And you have, you have to do that. You have to pay attention to stuff. You can't just be like, wow, something's happening. Because especially when it comes to grandmothers or grandparents in general, you know, they're not, they're not gonna last too much longer, you know? And I don't say that to be mean or anything, but you know, it, it is the truth. You know, they're they're close to the end. Um, so these shots are important. Do whatever you can to get stuff like this. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. They opened it up and they were like, wow. Um, and I can't see anything. So I immediately moved as quick as I could. Yeah, like stuff like this. We want those facial expressions. That's the stuff. That's the stuff we want. You know what I'm saying? Fifty, y'all. The fifty F1 is so good. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I used it at first and was like, oh, it's so big, it's so heavy. I don't know. And every time I use it, I'm like, yes. It's hard to tell, but your light bounced off the ceiling, or is it pointed directly at? It's, it's bouncing off the ceiling, and also the mag sphere, so, which is why I have it pointed up. It's just kind of filling in, and a, a lot of times I will depend mainly on bounce flash as much as possible, because that's gonna give you the most natural look to your flash. Because if I pointed my flashes at people and use like grids and stuff, you get that whole like shadows everywhere look, which I personally don't like. Um, again, to each their own, they're both all great techniques. As long as you're getting a good exposure and making good photos, you know, it doesn't matter. But generally that's what most people will do is they'll point the flashes at people. So like your general setup is two flashes kind of at an angle on your dance floor or something. Both of them gridded, pointing basically directly in. So it lights everything and then the lights coming straight in but then you also end up getting like shadows everywhere because the light's just flashing. So it's half and half. I personally am not a fan of it, but again, you can do whatever you like as long as it's lit and it looks good. Yeah, these are, these are winning photos. Oh yeah, and then they were pointing out her socks. <laughs> Dad was giving them a gift and he just saw me taking photos. He was like, yeah. I don't know if this is just me, but my mag sphere still have holes on one, it has a hole on one side. 
Whoa, it has a hole? Those things are thick. I'd be surprised if they had a hole in them. Do you use naked flash without mods? I do not. I always put something. The only time I ever use naked flash is if for some reason the flash isn't going far enough for me. Um, so I'll use the, that little white that little white thing that comes out of the flash. There goes some baby photos. I didn't get a picture of that cup. Here is some ice cream. And that's the end of the night. So let's see, it says I called 339 photos. So here they all are. So yeah, this was my first time using Narrative Select and this program is hype, y'all. I am feeling it. Again, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, there's the link for it. It's still in beta, so it's not out yet, but this was kind of a first look. This was literally my first time ever trying it and seeing it. Um, this thing is good. I am a big fan, especially for the family photos. This is good stuff. Uh, I don't think I have anything else I need to call right now. Um, let me see what's going on here. What do we have? Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what I usually like to do? I like to go into pick time. I use pick time as my way to tell what sessions I still need to finish. Because <laughs> I'll make the gallery immediately so that I can see like what is still in there. Oh, that's right. I got bridal portraits, but I can't call that on stream. Uh, Sarah and Patrick, did I call that? I can't remember if I called that. Yeah, I did a bridal portrait shoot a while ago, which was awesome. But again, those kind of photos you need to keep on the low until the wedding day. Like, I don't want any way for the groom to see it. And because now that I'm doing YouTube and my couples know that I'm doing YouTube, you know, they may come on here and see it, so. Which Canon lens is most similar to the one you're using for these on your Fujifilm? Um, so basically, it's, as far as focal lengths on Canon, you know, I'm using a 35, a 50, and an 85 on my wedding days. Um, so if you have like any of those in 1.4, you're gonna get a better depth of field because it's full frame. But those are the lens focal lengths you wanna use, all prime, 35, 50, 85. Make a street photography video. I was watching your tips. <laughs> the problem is there's like no street photography. I live in North Carolina now. There ain't nothing to take street for. I guess I could go to Charlotte Charlotte has a cool street photography vibe. Um, actually, yeah, I'll probably have to, or if I have a trip coming up to New York at some point, which I don't think I have anything soon, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, what do you know about fruit smoothies? <laughs> yeah, I think Sarah and Patrick, so let's let's try this out. So file, new project, Sarah and Patrick. Next, link a new source, weddings, Sarah and Patrick, open. Do you have any thoughts on the 90 F2? Yeah, so I have the 90 F2, and the only reason I got it was for churches where they're like, you have to stand in the back and you don't move and you don't go nowhere. Um, I don't use it that often. It's too close for me. I don't know, I've, I've gotten out of that. I tend to shoot wider. So when I was on Canon, I usually shot closer, but I don't like close lenses now, so. I'm more apt to not use it, but the 90 is nice. Um, it is a great lens. Do you watch anime? I do. I watch, actually, it's pretty much the only thing I watch. <laughs> like, if I'm watching TV at all, it's anime. I haven't watched any in a while, though. 
Did I not call this yet? I guess not. Dang, y'all, I'm behind. <laughs> Gotta run. We need to hook up. I'm in Raleigh, too. Yeah, definitely. And again, I may be doing some in-person workshops, so keep an eye out for that stuff. You could photograph the phone book, and God knows we'd eat it up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But yeah, street photography, the biggest thing, the biggest reason I was mentioning that, in my opinion, street photography and wedding photography are very similar. Because the biggest thing that's similar between the two is that moments happen and you have to know and anticipate the moments happening and be in the right spot to capture it. If you're not able to do that, you like miss out. And weddings are like that too. Now, obviously weddings are a little bit more controlled because I can break down the whole day into like sections of the day. So, you know, I'm like, okay, there's getting ready and there's this and there's ceremony and there's first look and there's family portraits. And you don't have that with street photography, but that same like, knowing something's gonna happen and framing it up and waiting for it to happen and getting it while it happens, that's the same. And I think street photography is a great way to practice being aware of the moments and grabbing them and framing them the way you wanted them to while they happen. Cause that's the same with wedding photography. You know, like if you miss the moment, it's gone. And it's the same with street photography. You can't be like, oh, sorry, sir. Uh, could you go back and walk past this thing again? Like you can't do that. Hunter x Hunter, yeah, I wish there was more episodes. <laughs> Yo, Hunter x Hunter was hype. The Chimera arc was just like crazy. And I remember watching it at first, I was like, what is this? This makes no sense. And then you get to the end of it and you're like, Yo. <laughs> Love from India, thank you so much. Cool, thanks for explaining how street photography and weddings relate, yeah. And I think, it's a again it's a great way to practice too because street photography you can just go and do that and there's like no stakes and you know either you get dope shots you don't and it's whatever and it's the same like you have to know how to light the photo and the scene well so usually you're working with like outdoors so you have a lot of light for street photography but still you have to be fast enough on your settings you have to know how to get focus all of that stuff is very much the same so I think it's kind of like a great place to start and practice for wedding photography. All right, here we go. We're gonna call another wedding. This was another backyard wedding. Um, the groom was a trucker. So we got trucks for days because that's an important part of his life. And him and his wife, they actually traveled together in his truck a fair amount. Do you own any film cameras? I do, I own a fair bit. I don't have any medium format ones yet, but I really want a medium format film. Oh, let's take this one instead. Those photos are sick sharp. Thank you, thank you. There goes that face detection again. Here goes more trucks. This was a Brenizer, which I don't think I combined it yet. But yeah, most most of the uh, most of the cameras I have are all thirty five. I have a Nikon uh, F eighty and an isn't it F eighty? No, I have a Nikon N eighty, which is basically like an automatic film camera. It shoots like a digital, basically. And then I also have a Nikon FG20, um, and then a bunch of Fuji Instax stuff.
Here is another Brenizer, which I don't think I combined yet. Oh wait, this is another Brenizer. I gotta go through and combine these. Do you use the 35 F1.4 for any events? I don't. Um, I actually, I have it coming to me on loan. I'm gonna do an anniversary session and I'm going to uh, use all 1.4 in higher lenses or faster. Um, just so y'all can see what it looks like when you use like the fastest Fuji lenses all together on a session. Nice, I just got back into photography because of film recently. Make a video where you shoot film. Awesome, yeah, I definitely will. I got a bunch of, um, got a bunch of stuff. I think this is expired. This uh, Fujifilm Superior 1600. Um, so I have some of this. This is 2018. I had a couple of, and I got the Pro 400H stuff. So I do have the film. I got it over here hanging out and chilling waiting to be used. Do you go much more in depth on Patreon than YouTube and is the preset free with the 20? Yeah, so on Patreon, basically the preset is free. You get it. So if you really think about it, and this, this was how I was kind of trying to do it, so I do have more in-depth videos and or subjects that are a little bit more directed towards like wedding photog photography subjects. Um, so for instance, like one of the more recent ones was me doing flat lays and I like you literally watch me do the whole flat lay. Um, I also have like the family portrait section behind the scenes and I wanna do more. I'm having a hard time keeping up with it to be honest. But again, as, even if you sign up for one month, the preset costs 25 bucks. When you sign up for Patreon, it's only $20. So you're getting a $5 discount basically. Um, and you can go back and see any of my content on there. And also you have a little bit more access to me on Patreon. I'll answer your questions more direct. I'll make a quick video for you if I can. Um, it's that kind of stuff, so. Thank you for that sub. Random question. But what is your advice on this? I feel like I'm a pretty good photographer and grateful for all the clients, such so business I get. Sometimes I feel like I'm not good enough. So first, the first thing with that is I, I feel like at least for the majority of photographers, you're always gonna have that feeling of not feeling like you're good enough. Um, and I don't think that necessarily is a bad thing because that means that you are open to always wanting to get better, which is good. Um, you never should get into a complacent place where you're just like, ha oh, oh, I'm the greatest. There's always something you can learn. There's always something you can get better at. Um, getting better and feeling like you're getting better, that's the hard part. Um, advice for that, honestly, I would say just shoot things that you're not normally shooting. Um, try out different styles of photography and also be open to learning things that you may have not wanted to do or try before. So it's the same thing I say about natural light photographers, which I'm more of a natural light photographer. You need to understand off camera flash, you know, and you should practice it and you should learn it. Um, now, are you gonna use it at all of your weddings? Probably not and that's fine. But if you find yourself in that one situation where like off camera flash is the only option, you know, then you're gonna be like, oh cool, I took the time to actually try and learn this. So, you know, I'm good to go. I'm trying to see if there was a shot of him like smiling. Y'all, this face detection stuff is serious. And this is the beta. This is not even like the final thing. Yeah, my cameras are all out of sync. <laughs> this is annoying. <laughs> 
It's only bad if you dwell on it and let it bring you down. Exactly. Exactly. Like it, if you're like stuck in a place, you're like, oh, I'm the worst and I'll never be a great photographer. That's where it's going to be a bad thing. But if it's like you understanding that you can always get better and grow, then it's a good thing. And it'll help you stay on top of just like learning and being better rather than being complacent and be like, oh, I'm such a great photographer. There we go. Get those smiles in there. Yeah, this face detection is good. I like this a lot. Great job, narrative folks. Great job. Can confirm that feeling never goes away. It really doesn't. <laughs> How do you make sure all the special moments, everything, are generally stay in focus? Again, and I, I talk about this in my seven tips for your first wedding, is don't use continuous autofocus. You know, a lot of times, yes, some stuff is gonna get out of focus and that's what it is, but I think the more that you can, you can be the one telling your camera what to do, the better you're gonna get your shots. So again, everyone has the mentality of like, oh, you're not professional if you don't use, you know, if you don't shoot in manual, um, but then they'll sit there and let their camera do all the focusing for them. And I think it's, it's kind of backwards to think like that. You know, if you're shooting manual so that you can shoot in Kelvin and control your exposure, you should also control your autofocus, not just turn on continuous autofocus and zone focus and expect the thing to track everything. So I usually use single point focus and I move my square wherever I, wherever I need to. I'm trying to at some point um, record my EVF on a wedding day so y'all can actually see me focusing on things and see how I handle that. But um, focus recompose is hype. You know, like I use that all the time. Have you ever had a customer of yours pixel peep? One of my worst fears, especially if I have to use a shot of the feeling I wanted to, but not sharp. No, it's it's like rare. The only the only way you're gonna get a customer who pixel peeps is if they take like they take photos themselves as well. And at that point, it's kind of like nitpicky. Um, obviously, if a photo is like extremely out of focus, you know, at that point, it's not gonna be pixel peep, and they're just gonna be like, this photo's mad blurry. Um, but if it's a little bit out, but the emotion in the photo is really good. I've never in my seven years seen someone be like, oh, what's wrong with this photo? Like, they're just gonna see everyone like smiling and stuff and be like, wow. I know some photographers who purposely take blurry photos. Um, I've seen it before and it's actually kind of hype. <laughs> like, I like it. I'm like, oh, I never even thought to like straight up just take a blurry photo, but make sure the photo is about the feel. Um, it's actually really cool. Do you stick the Brenizer photos together before culling? I don't. Um, sometimes I do, but that's just if I'm like at home, like editing real quick, like a preview or something. I'm doing my first wedding in two weeks. What should I watch out for? I'm using a second photographer and planning on using some of your advice. Um, the biggest, biggest things to watch out for, really, a lot of it's just making sure you're aware, you're paying attention to what's happening um, during your wedding day so that you can catch moments while they happen um, rather than just kind of like complacently standing around. Um, even stuff like this at the ceremony, like make sure at the ceremony you're looking around because What's gonna happen in ceremony time, you know, your couple's just kind of standing there and officiant's talking, especially if you have one of those like longer ceremonies or like a Catholic church ceremony, them things are long. But, you know, like, don't just sit there and be like, okay, they're just talking forever. Like, pay attention to the people around, pay attention to people in their family um, because during the ceremony, they might be doing something fun or cute or something. Let 
Here's our first kiss. This was also 50 F1. And then, so here I switched to tracking, right? So zone tracking, so that's the big square with the squares in it. Continuous autofocus. And these are the only times that I really use it is when people are walking towards me. Because again, I know exactly where they're going. There's no point in just having continuous on autofocus on the whole time and then hoping that it catches focus. And then I have them stop and kiss. Thank you for that sub. Appreciate it. Definitely try to learn new things and keep positive mindset. I definitely think it's good because I wanna keep getting, exactly. Yeah, that feeling of not being good enough, it'll just make you better. Um, and you know, I can tell you over the years, especially if you keep striving for stuff, the good thing is that you'll get to a place where you'll start feeling at least much more better and confident about stuff. You won't feel so much like, oh, like I'm really not good. Um, so yeah. So here's something I normally don't do, which is backlight like this, and the whole background's blown out. I'm not a fan, but again, sometimes you just have to pick what works with your location, so. I tried to do a Brenizer here, but I don't think it worked because they kept moving. Yeah, they, they kept moving. I watched many of your videos and they're honestly so helpful doing my second wedding Saturday. Awesome, good luck on that. I'm just starting out with my passion in photography. What was your inspiration for starting your business? So honestly, honestly, my inspiration was trying to make this money. <laughs> and I always, I always hate that like when I tell the story, that's how it ends up being. But at the time, so I majored in music production. So making beats and music production and recording and all that type of stuff, that was my main jam. That's what I was doing at first. But when my wife got pregnant with our first kid, she wanted to stay at home. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I need another job because we can't, you know, me with one job, this ain't gonna work. Um, and she was like, don't do that, you know, start a business. So I was like, cool. I dabbled in photography. I liked it. It was fun, but I never really took it like seriously. Um, so yeah, that's what kind of got me into photography it was more so the business aspect of it. Um, but I did like photography. It's not like I just randomly was like, I'm gonna take photos. Am I using back button focus or shutter button? I usually use shutter button. The only time I do back button focus is if I'm using continuous autofocus, which is again, when someone's like walking towards me or away from me or something of that sort. Narrative is so good at capturing these faces. This is like crazy. It is crazy to see this. It is so good. What were the risks you took when you were just starting? Hmm, um, hmm. So I tend to overinvest up front. So one of the biggest risks is before I was even really making money, like I threw a good 10K into buying cameras and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I like barely had started. I had like nothing in the books. I was just blowing money everywhere. Um, I also, I was shooting weddings on a single card 
for a while actually. I was using the Canon 6D. Um, and yeah, I never second shot. So when I started doing weddings, I just like started doing them. And that honestly is kind of a risk. It's a pretty big risk. Now you can do it, but they need to be small, small weddings where the stakes are very low. And even that's risky. So those were probably the risks I took. Luckily, I came out of it without any scars uh, or I guess I definitely had probably one of my worst situations. Um, it was pretty bad, but it helped me learn a lot about dealing with my customers. And again, the fact that um, wedding photography is 80 percent customer service first and foremost it helped me realize that so good old hashtag photos Signing up on Patreon, see you there, gotta go now. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. Do you stick to shooting horizontal most of the time or do you just mix it up? Some of my vertical shots come out out of focus about 20% of the time. I generally will shoot horizontal, but depending on what it is and if I have time, I'll definitely try and get a vertical in there as well. So you saw with a lot of those family shots, especially when it's like two people, I'll get horizontal and vertical. What is the best kit lens for the X-T4 in your opinion? I think it's that 18 to 55. I actually was considering buying one. We did the same thing. Our first wedding would have been one of our most beautiful if we knew what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like jumping into stuff too early, which you can definitely learn some stuff, but the risk you're running is, is scary. So these are what I would call my standard solo shots. So, you know, full body bride, vertical, horizontal, close up bride, ho vertical, horizontal. Get her looking off to the side, vertical, horizontal. Get a shot of the bouquet, vertical, horizontal. With the bouquet, when it's vertical, look down, give it a smile. Close ups of some details. We didn't do any getting ready photos for this wedding. So here's her necklace. Your earrings are kind of in there. You see the ring, you see your hand. Here's another one. Here's the earring close up in there. Here's the back of the dress. Looking off to the side. Let's get it with the smile in there instead. So yeah, just remember you can get a lot of poses out of like one location and you don't have to think of like you know all kinds of crazy because that's I think a lot of people get scared of posing because they're like oh I don't know how to pose and I have to do all these things and really like literally like moving a hand and arm like to one little place or a head changes the whole pose so keep that in mind hey John what program is this this is narrative select it is in beta still but it is awesome if you're curious about it and want to check it out, you can check it out at that link that I just put in the chat. Um, there's a wait list for it currently. It's not out yet, so keep that in mind, but it's very cool. As you can see, what it's doing is it's showing me if people's eyes are open and if they're in focus. So the red bar means their eyes are barely open and there's a circle under there. If it's gray, that means they're in focus. What's a newly released camera you'd like to have that's not Fuji? Mm. I think if I were to go anywhere else, um, the Canons really are drawing my attention, especially to um, just looking at their raw files. It's good stuff. Good, good stuff. So again, the groom is a trucker. So obviously we gotta get some shots with the trucks in there. What 
What do you use to send your pictures? I use PicTime. PicTime is my absolute favorite. Oh, I think I did a Brunizer of that too, yeah. Did I, did I combine this one already? I don't know. How do you get shadowing experience for weddings? I'd like to, second, becoming a second photographer is probably one of the harder things, um, especially if you have a photographer who's like, you know, very active a lot of times they want someone who you know knows a bit more of what they're doing not just like someone who's totally inexperienced um <laughs> i thought he had his hand on his where am i gonna place this block But yeah, the main thing is reach out to photographers, um, but you know, just ask them how you can help. And don't don't come at it like, hey, I want a second photograph for you. Just be like, can I just be an assistant and hang out and help you out carry bags or something? And you know, if I'm able to take pictures, that would be great because I want to get some practice in. Because thinking that you, without practice, are gonna be able to be a second photographer, it's just unrealistic. Most photographers are gonna be like, you have no idea what you're doing, I can't trust the photos you're gonna take. But if you're like, I can carry your bags and if you don't mind me taking some photos while I'm there, that's much more realistic. So being like an assistant or a third is much more realistic. Yeah, anytime there's a shot of a guy smiling, especially when you have like an unemotive sir like this groom, those shots are gonna be money. Cause the brides especially know that like, you know, her man is just not emotive and stuff in photos. So when you can get those shots, they're just like, oh my goodness. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> You probably get this question almost every day, but do you recommend a good beginner's camera? I wanna start photographing my friends who DJ, love the channel. So, um, as you know, I mainly shoot Fujifilm. I am a Fujifilm ambassador. And even before I was an ambassador, I absolutely love Fujifilm. Um, a great starter camera, so their XT double series, so like XT30 is a great place to start. Um, or the new one that they just announced, the XS10, um, is really, it looks really good. But basically for starter cameras, you just need something where you can work with and understand exposure and light, because that's really the point. Um, a lot of times, you know, people will sit here and talk about, oh, this camera is better and cameras and you gotta spend all this money on cameras and stuff. First and foremost, you just need something that you can use to understand light. That's what you wanna learn. Learn how cameras work, learn how light works. Because if you don't know that, no matter how expensive your camera is, your photos are gonna be bad. Um, the cameras aren't what make the good photos. So even um, thinking of things as like a starter camera, it's kind of half and half. Like the only reason it's a starter camera is because it's cheaper and that's it. You know, like you don't have to have the latest whatever. Um, but other than that, yeah, that XS10 is looking nice. Or something like an XT20 or XT2, you know, go back older in your cameras as well. So here's a cool tip that I usually do. Um, a lot of times, you know how everyone's like clinking the glass, getting the couple to kiss, and then everyone's looking at you and like, take the photo. When the couple first sits down at their sweetheart table, I have them do a kiss for me at the sweetheart table. So it looks like in the photos that I did get one of those old people are clanking the glass and they kissed. Um, I get it real quick first when they sit down so that then when food starts, when eating starts, 
I'm not bothering anybody. You know what I'm saying? Get this in. Okay, y'all eat. I'll go chill. I'll go eat. And we'll all chill and it'll be fine. Rather than waiting for, you know, guests to clink the glass and, oh, kiss, kiss. And then me come, you know, just get the shot. Because again, photos are a moment in time and photos take things out of context. So, you know, no one knows when this happened, but it looks like a great photo. And that's the point. So just always remember that, like, don't, for anyone who like has their first wedding or something coming up, don't just wait for stuff to happen. If you can take the thing, it'll be fine. No one's gonna look back and be like, well, this photo happened because he did this and it wasn't really what, eh, eh. They're gonna see a good photo and they're gonna be like, wow. Thanks, I've been meaning to message photographers to assist. Yeah, exactly. Just, just let them know you wanna assist. And then once you build a portfolio and you can make, make yourself a little website, or just a little web page of like, hey, I'm a second photographer. Here's my work. Here's who I've worked for in the past. Here's some recommendations. And then go from there. Because at that point, you can show now that, yes, I can handle shooting stuff. And then go forward from there. I suggest reaching out to larger photo studios in the area. They're, expect they're usually more open to... S That's true. That's a good point. That is a very good point. Can you help out with contracts? I need one, but yeah. So for contracts, for the most part, I just like to point you all to some great places where you can kind of get some starter contracts. Um, I can also suggest stuff you can put in your contracts, but again, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not really the best person to give you information on that. So at this wedding, there was a bunch of kids. Um, so I spent most of the time just making sure getting some cute photos of like the kids while they were doing whatever like that. So this is the bride and groom's son. This is the money shot. They're gonna be like, oh, wow. Um, this again was all the 50 F1, that lens. Cause you know what it is about that? That lens gives a full frame look on a crop sensor. Like it's really good. Hello, hi, welcome to the stream. Are you using the cam link? Have you had any over overheating issues? I haven't. Um, so I am using the cam link. I'm using it with the X-T3. Um, I've been streaming now for two hours and a lot of the times I'll stream for three hours and I've never run into an issue at all. So these are just speeches. Pretty straightforward. I love how narrative selects is just showing the faces. It's like so good. Cause then especially if you're like culling from the same scene, you already know that everything's pretty much good. So yeah, a photo like this that's out of focus, obviously his beer is what's in focus. I'll still send this. I'll probably black and white it, but it's fine. How do you approach an unenthusiastic bridesmaid? For instance, I had a bridesmaid who would say, I'm done walking, as the other 10's bridesmaids were having a great time. Oh, that's the hardest. Those are the hardest. I don't know if I have any really good tips for that kind of stuff. I feel like there's always one person trying to like undermine the whole situation. Um. I don't know, the biggest thing is if you can get other bridesmaids on your team, it helps. Um, and obviously the bride, but see, you don't wanna cause beef between her and her bridesmaids. Um, so it's hard. I just try and be as nice as possible and kill it with kindness usually works. Um, but a lot of times I'll just be real with people and just ask them what they want or what they need. Um, but yeah, luckily I haven't run into a lot of that, so. What lens do you rec recommend? <laughs> what lens do you recommend for documentary photography? 35 or I would say 35. Oh, it depends. Um, so like street photography and stuff like that, I like the 35. If you're talking about like documentary photography at an event, a 56 probably would be better because you get to stay out of the way. You know, you can kind of sit in the corner, fly on the wall and take your shots because it's long enough. But it's not too long that you're like totally out of the action. Have you shot with the X100V? I have not and I really want to. 
honestly, I'm having not a hard time not buying one, but I really don't need it, so. Oh yeah, <laughs> Mark, we're sorry, we'll be done soon. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot of that, you know, just. And that goes back to wedding photography being 80% customer service. You just have to kind of know the ways to like engage people to make it not mean or like nice ways to pacify them and be like, bro, stop <laughs> without being mean about it, you know? There's always one person trying to undermine. I mean, there really, there really is. Actually, and thank you for that sub. In one, of, in one of my full wedding day videos, it almost kind of happened to me where we were gonna take like a bridesmaid robe shot on the bed. And I was asking one bridesmaid to move somewhere and she was straight up like, nah, I'm not doing it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, it's in the uh, the full wedding day, the New York one. Let me see if I can find it for y'all real quick. Do, 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 do. That's why I actually, I put the text on the screen. Yeah. Oh. Ads everywhere, so many ads. What is this, John, beta culling? You've never heard of beta culling? <laughs> uh, this is a Narrative Select. It's a new app by Narrative. And it has face detection, AI face detection, yeah. So here on this video, which I linked the exact second, you can hear the bridesmaid basically tell me no. Um, and obviously it's not as bad as them like trying to undermine the whole situation, but it definitely was kind of like, oh dang. Um, and yeah, it it worked out and it was fine, but. Um, but yeah, so first off, Reggie's in the house. Y'all go follow him, check out his YouTube channel. Reggie's awesome, he's also a Fujifilm creator. But um, yeah, so Reggie, this is a culling program, so basically a competitor to Photo Mechanic, but it'll tell you if eyes are closed and if the face is in focus or not. So for general culling, it's pretty cool, but for family portraits and stuff, it is beastie. Which I can go back real quick to some family photos just to show you how it kinda. Wow, there's that many photos? I've called this much. Maybe I won't go back. <laughs> but yeah, it grabs all the faces. It's really good. Can I just start from here and will it pick up again? It will. Great job. So yeah, yellow means the eyes are closed or basically closed. Red dot means it's not in focus. <laughs> Derailing your life. <laughs> just waiting on the so I just bought a GFX 100 video. <laughs> Y'all, every day I have to stop myself to not buy the GFX 100. Oh, so here is, I don't know if Louis or Louise, I can't remember if he's still in the chat, but this is a great example of like, do you have couples who, or clients who pixel peep? This is clearly out of focus. Um, but it's still getting delivered because of the feeling and it'll be fine and at at worst I'll black and white it Because this is when I caught the focus again, and this is not a good shot, so You know sometimes there's gonna be slightly soft photos and it's it's okay It's not gonna hurt nobody Especially if the emotion in the photo was good But look at look at this thing grabbing all the faces look at that it even got her in the back here drinking <laughs> you know, like, crazy. So there wasn't a lot of dancing at this wedding. That's kind of the norm now. 
receptions aren't really a thing anymore at the moment. I generally don't shoot receptions like this with like a long lens. Um, I'll generally shoot with a wide lens and get closer, but again, this is like not the normal situation anymore, so. I'm just kind of shooting things as they happen. So here we go, this is a great example with how it's picking all the faces and showing if they're sharp or not and if the eyes are open. That bridesmaid, I would rather not. I'm notorious for hitting them back with the sarcastic will. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's really, honestly too, like, it's sarcastic and kind of like underhanded saying something like that is like, well, it is your day. Like, I mean, depending on your bride, she might be like, uh, yeah, you know, and then, and then it becomes an ordeal, which we don't want, but. Here comes cake cut. So see, generally I'll take a photo like this just to check my light, because I am shooting at flash at this point. And then generally for this stuff, I'm just looking for emotions and things. Laughs and facial expressions. Is the 100 millimeter macro lens good for starters to shoot portraits? I've heard it is. I've never used it before personally, um, but I've heard it works for portraits still too. <laughs> I love cake cutting photos because they're <laughs> I send those too. Just thinking about like, oh, what was I doing with my mouth? Those are always fun photos. Thanks, yes, mainly the lens would be for event portrait photography. I also prefer 56. Greetings from Germany. Switch back to Fuji because of the more relaxed COVID area, COVID era weddings, yeah. Slow paced, smaller, um, Smaller events. Obviously, I shoot Fuji for everything, but look look at this thing catching everybody's face. Look at that. Look at this. Is there a cheaper lens brand you recommend if you can't afford the Fuji ones? I haven't used anything else, but I've heard that Viltrox is pretty good. Um, but again, I've never used any of their lenses. Check out Danae and Andrew. Yes, they yeah they have so many good lens videos. Do you ever get discouraged when families don't give you feedback or find multiple money shots? Um, yeah, it does kind of suck. <laughs> when you shoot a wedding, you're like, yeah, I did this wedding. It's so good. And then like, no, you hear nothing. No one gives you a re review or anything. And you're just kind of like, oh, okay. You know, like, was I good at all? Thank you for that sub. You're like, I did my best. Don't you like my photos? <laughs> you deliver the photos. My wife's like, did you hear anything back from the couple? No. You know, I sent the photos and then that's it. I don't hear from them anymore. I'm hoping I can save this. So I was in this spot here, which was kind of dark and in shade. And then his mom was leaving. Um, and I didn't switch before I got here and it was just too bright. I think this is savable, but it's pretty overexposed. So we'll see what happens. And that's another thing y'all like, anyone who's like newer and you're like worried, or you're like, oh, I mess up all the time. This stuff happens. You're gonna make mistakes. The, the biggest thing with wedding photography and kind of the same as my video of the seven tips is making sure you minimize as much as possible your mistakes. Your mistakes should be small mistakes. They should be one-off shots like this. You know, that shouldn't be the majority of your photos. 
um, but you'll still do stuff like this. I've been shooting weddings for seven years and I still have out of focus shots and I still have overexposed shots sometimes, but the majority of my shots are money shots. And that's what makes the difference between someone new and someone who's been doing it for a while. Do you ask permission for the customer to post on your social media? No, I do not. Um, well, technically it is in the contract. So when they sign a contract, they're signing um, a model release and also copyright. So I can use the photos however I need to and want to. Sometimes couples will request that, that their photos aren't shown at all. And when that happens, then there's like a, kind of like a, basically a non-disclosure agreement. Um, and then I'll charge extra for that because, you know, I lose a wedding that I can show for my portfolio, which can also bring in more work. Good weddings always gotta have a shot. Make sure you pay attention to what's going on and try and get these pictures. Thoughts on the new XS10? I think it's hype. I think it looks like the new YouTubers camera. Um, I want to try one. <laughs> it looks really awesome. Cue my anxiety. Uh, did you hate it? I'm about to. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I'll be hating that too when I get no feedback. Yeah, and you're like, was it good? Was it okay? You will make mistakes. Yep, exactly. And that's the biggest thing. I know a lot of new new wedding photographers or people to weddings, they're like they're so concerned about making mistakes. But it's it's less about that and more about knowing that you can minimize the mistakes. Cause you will make mistakes. They they happen. They always happen. There's always, I come away from the majority of my weddings with like a, ah, I should have did that or, ah, I could have done that better. Or like, ah, I made the wrong choice here. It happens like nearly every wedding. But those things are so minuscule in the grand scheme, you know, and they're not things that like my couples are gonna be like, oh no, you know, like as long as you don't have things that are gonna destroy your whole couple's lives and they're gonna be, they're gonna feel like they didn't get good service. As long as you don't have that, you're good, you know? XS10 is going to be the vlogging beast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The XS10 is going to be so good. Do you store all of your photos after you send them to your clients? I do. So I basically have a... Um... So first I have where I import all my RAWs. So I have that. I have a backup drive that also has backups of the raw. So I have two copies of the raws. And then I have another hard drive that has all the JPEGs that I export. So like all the JPEGs go into a place too and they stay here. And then that stuff is backed up to Backblaze as well. Do you still offer a higher Patreon for $50? I don't, but I do need to start. I wanna start doing more stuff where like mentoring and stuff like that. Here's some of the edited photos of this wedding. Right now the $20 is like the highest one um, and you get the preset for free. So really it's a pretty good deal. I'm a Sony shooter and even I want the XS10. <laughs> Your worst wedding experience. Um, I've talked about it once or twice my worst wedding experience actually was post wedding it wasn't during the wedding um i i had a bride who ended up once the photos were delivered i don't i don't know why or what happened but she just basically was like these photos suck are they even edited you know i can edit these on my iphone if you need me to and all kinds of craziness and um Oh, I think this is supposed to be Bernizer, yeah. But uh, yeah, so then, you know, after a long time of emailing back and forth, 
um, we finally get to a decision where I basically give her all the JPEG photos from the wedding day and also a slight refund so that she can create and buy her own album. And even after all of that, she tries to print a photo and she's like, hey, I tried to print this and it looks horrible. And I'm like, well, you know, there's a lot that could go into a bad print. So I'm not sure how you printed it or what you were doing. And yeah, she started doing chargebacks on her credit card. It was the worst. Um, every time she did a chargeback on her credit card, she did it on like a holiday or something too. Or like the day before a holiday. It was the absolute worst. Um, so yeah, she stole half her money back. I ended up not taking her to court, but I was definitely like, hey, if you continue, we might have to like do something about this because technically she was voiding out her contract and I did do what I was supposed to deliver. And it was one of my best weddings at the time. Um, so yeah, that was my worst experience. It was the worst. It messed me up, y'all. I was like beside myself. It's one of those things that made me, you know, consider like quitting photography, it was horrible. Which is why for my seven tips for your first wedding, the first thing I talk about is pre-wedding communication. That's what I learned from that experience is um, how important pre-wedding communication is. Cause you know, I don't like to blame anybody for anything. Like I could easily be like, oh, she was crazy, but I don't, you know, I don't wanna do that. So the only thing I can equate what happened to is the fact that, um, we weren't on the same page about how I photograph things and how I edit things and how I capture things. And I wasn't really what she wanted as a photographer. She was just like, oh, he takes photos and he's good and the price is fine, book him. Um, you wanna stay away from couples like that. And it's nothing against them and it's nothing against you, but if you're not 100% gonna meet their needs, it's better for everyone that y'all just don't work together. Um, so I had to learn that the hard way but it, it definitely improved overall my approach. Um, no, 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 hi, I'm a college student who has recently started a new business. Should I invest in lights? And what do you recommend with medium budget? Definitely invest in lights. Um, if you're doing any, if you're doing wedding photography, especially you definitely need lights. You at least need some speed lights. I use the V, the Godox V uh, 860s or something of that sort. Um, and this shot, and I have a video about it, um, which I can find y'all that video as well. I use this little LED light that I have. Did my live stream stop? What is this video? Do, 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 here it is. So for this sparkler exit, I use this little LED light so that I don't have to use flash because I don't I don't like using flash for sparkler exits because it gets rid of the, um, the kind of ambience coming from the sparkler lights because you want that, you know what I mean? So I use that little LED light on top of my camera to just push a little bit extra light on there, but not get rid of the ambiance of the lights. And then again, I'm shooting with the 50 F1, so I'm able to, you know, bring in a lot of light. Yeah, you can see it when I get closer to them. You see how it gets brighter because they're closer to the light source. Man, they had those little tiny sparklers. You know, the ones that are like this big. <laughs> those are the worst to work with because you have this like crowd of drunk people and it's like, okay, let's do a sparkler shot. And they're like this big. Oh, Reggie, that 1814. <laughs> I'm sure you were like, yeah. Yeah, 1814 is gonna make me get rid of my 16 2.8 real quick. Um, this couple, I think they got engaged at that wedding and I took this picture for them and I gave it to them. So I'm hoping they remember who I am. 
and when they're looking for somebody. Then they started shooting off fireworks and they scared all the kids because they were shooting them like right there and it was mad loud. <laughs> cool, so that's that one. I called 481 photos. Yep, I'm liking this program, y'all. That face detection stuff is legit. It is so good. It is so good. Look, look at that again. Uh-oh. Did we hit a weird beta function? There it goes, guys. It's, it's still in beta. <laughs> Your photos are amazing. Thank you so much, yeah. And I mean, like it, it, like I said again, it was one of my best weddings back then, so. <laughs> there should be a law against getting engaged at someone's wedding. I mean, yeah, it is kind of like. I don't know what happened. I just lost the whole program. It gave out on me. That's good though, because I just finished calling everything, so. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, that pre-wedding communication is hands down like one of the most important parts of weddings, like really. What if all your calls were gone? Look, let's just, let's not think about that right now, okay? We're just gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, you know, everything is good. I'm, so that stuff saves to the, um to the files. It should be in the metadata, so it should be good to go. But yeah, whatever I did killed it. That's the fun of beta. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Either way, I was gonna have to try and figure it out because yeah, it's in the XMP data at this point, but all of my stuff in Lightroom is on the Windows side of my computer, not the Mac. So I have to restart the computer anyway to see if it's gonna work, so. That's what it is. I was wondering, did you miss full frame in any situation? I did not whatsoever. So I was shooting on the Canon 6D, which is full frame. It was like their entry level full frame at the time. Um, and yeah, no, I moved to Fuji like immediately and was totally happy with the way it looked. Um, and I still am. Did you sync cameras in the program? I wasn't there for that. Um, no, so this stuff was already imported and then I basically just called the stuff and then I have to sync it back to Lightroom But yeah, my two cameras are always in sync for the most part. I have the timing about the same Big shout out from VA VA neighbors to NC. I did a shoot with a young man running for mayor of Raleigh a few weeks. Oh nice. F in the chat for the one dude who's going to propose the wedding. <laughs> yeah, the 6D was so good. It was like such a weird camera too, because it was like Canon was like, you know, we have the 5D Mark III and all this great stuff, but we're also going to basically make a little baby 5D Mark III that's cheaper. It was so good. Actually, the other day I was going through some of my old photos and I was like, yo... It's been so long since I've looked at this stuff. Uh, 2016, take you back in the day. Have you look at some of my old stuff? I don't even remember. I don't remember what any of this stuff is. Oh, this was a cool engagement shoot. This was a cool engagement shoot. This is a Brenizer. So this was back when I shot on the 6D. This was like old, old school. I also didn't have my preset then. So this is like Mastin Labs or something. So will you be switching away from Photo Mechanic? At this point, yeah, I, I liked that. There's only a couple of things that I didn't like, but so far this looks good. And it sounds like it's gonna be able to do the same process that I do with Photo Mechanic anyway. I still use the 60 as my second camera. Yeah, it's a great camera. So this engagement session was in Hoboken.
And yeah, you can see my style didn't really change too much. I still shoot very much the same. The biggest difference is the backgrounds are blurred out a little bit more, but it still very much looks like me. Um, I started shooting wider when I moved to Fuji. I think this was the, uh, what lens is that? The 105 or something? 110? I can't remember what lens that was. Do you have to add anything or do any special to use Lightroom for Fujifilm? You don't. Um, again, everyone talks about the worms and they act like Capture One is literally the only way, but it's not. You can import like normal. You can do all that stuff normally. There's like, there's no problems there at all. How did you find your editing style like to build presets? Honestly, it's just a lot of trial and error and figuring out what you like in shots and it takes a while. Um, sometimes having other people critique your photos too helps. Like one thing that I don't do in my black and whites anymore is these were very like faded. So they were like muted. And black and white is kind of about the, you know, the contrast between the black and white. So I kind of tried to change that up. Blast from the past, it's been so long. Oh, here was a good, this was a good engagement session too. I did a little Photoshop magic here cause the words yes, love and the heart were actually up here on the sign, but it was like a, it was a whole sign about something. I can't remember what it said originally, but I Photoshopped it. But yeah, this was a fun session. This was a while ago too. But yeah, you can tell a lot of my wide shots, I wasn't really shooting wide. Like I stayed on a 50 and like a 110 all the time back in the day. And then when I moved to Fuji, I started shooting wider. So then all my like wide shot Wednesday and all that stuff, that's all thanks to Fujifilm. Do you still use the use two X-T3s for your work or did you switch from those to X-T4? Yes, I still do use the X-T3s as my main cameras. The X-T4 is now kind of like my video camera or if I shoot hybrid, so I'm doing photo and video at a session or a wedding, um, I'll use the X-T4 then, but I only have one X-T4. I'm shooting my first wedding this Saturday. Would you recommend I use the 16 to 55? be more agile or just stick with the primes. Uh, I mean, if it's your first time and you're not comfortable with primes, then use the zoom. But personally, I like primes better. And really it's just starting to get used to where you need to stand to get your focus and stuff. Now, if you, um, if you're not, if you're just using like one body, then definitely use that zoom lens. But if you have two bodies, um, primes are great for that kind of stuff too. This was so long ago. This was a Brenizer. Do you have any side hustles? At this point, <laughs> not really. I feel like everything goes together. Um, basically, as far as work and jobs, it's wedding photography and YouTube. Um, so they all kind of go together. Any side hustles outside of that, I really don't have any time for anymore. I guess YouTube used to be the side hustle, but it's been taken off, so. Which camera were you using back then? This is the Canon 6D. Yeah, I used to shoot close all the time. That was like the only way I shot. Oh, was that a GIF? Ah. How cool. The shutter was so slow. I do GIFs now on the Fuji films and it's like, they're basically videos. <laughs> Are there any issues with cropping on Fuji? There's not, obviously you shouldn't be cropping heavily since it's only 26 megapixels, but I crop, I crop fairly often actually. 
I have one body, XT3. However, I have, I may take the X100V as a second body. Oh, see, and that's what you can do. So if you're on an XT3 and the, if you're okay with the quality of the X100V, which I've never used, you could use the X100V as your wide lens, so like your 23, and then have the XT3 for your tele camera. Cause that's usually how I do it. One camera is wide and the other is tight. And so then basically you can be like, okay, my XT3 will take all my 35 and 56 photos. And then the X100V will be for the wide stuff. What about Fuji makes you shoot wider? I don't know. Fuji just made me like see things totally differently. Um, it's, it just changes the whole approach. Like it, it really, it's, it's so good. So, so good. All right, y'all. Thinking that's about it. It looks like narrative gave out on me, but again, this is the beta, so it actually did great. It just handled like two and a half hours of calling. I called three weddings, so everything was great. I love the program, and again, I'll try and link y'all. Let me link y'all to that again. If you're curious about checking out narrative select, definitely check it out there um again there's a wait list for it but you saw it here it's a great program for culling and the face detection stuff is absolutely amazing for family photos so thanks again for hanging out and again thanks for subscribing and all the likes and we're gonna be doing a 50k stream sometime soon i'm still trying to figure out all the details for it so it won't be immediately when i hit 50k because I think that's actually coming up soon, but um, I'm hoping to do a studio session, natural light studio and tether so y'all can see me taking the photos and we'll just hang out and stuff, answer questions and cool things like that. So again, thank you all for hanging out and I will catch you next time. All right, peace.